Good morning again, everyone. I know we're, we have some visitors in our midst. If you could just raise your hand. We're very, very happy that you've joined us, and we're glad to have you here worshiping with us today. Um, if I could have Brandy come up, and she'll be sharing a few things, and my screen will come up in a moment here. Brandy has been doing some Bible studies. By the way, if your desire is to give studies, we, again, we would love for you to go through training. You know, you probably think you could do everything on your own, but according to Scripture, I see where even prayer, the disciples came to Jesus and, and they asked, teach us to pray as what? John taught his disciples. I believe part of the reason why we were scattered in all these different various ways is because we are not being taught. We're not allowing the scriptures to teach us. And so we, we are going to be doing training next week in how to share your faith, how to do Bible studies. So Brandy, share with us just quickly what's going on with the Bible studies. Um, so as you guys know, the last couple of months I've been bringing my cousin, Kristen, um, to church with me. And... Um, she decided uh, last Sabbath that she wanted to be baptized, so uh, praise God for that. And uh, she also wanted to go through some Bible studies, so we got the Amazing Facts Bible amazing studies, facts, which though. are fantastic. And we started this past Tuesday, um, and then yesterday we had a meeting, and it was me and Kristen and Holly. Um, and it was just really spirit-led, and it was just such a blessing um, I get really nervous leading Bible studies because sometimes I feel like I'm not maybe knowledgeable enough, but um, through prayer and through Holly praying for me while I was doing the study, it just was such a blessing, and, and so I really encourage you guys, if you have someone that God is leading you to disciple, get involved in doing this and find a partner to pray for you also. All right, so when we go on studies, again, that's biblical. In the book of Luke chapter 10, you see where Jesus, he sent his disciples out by what? Two by two. You read in the Bible about Paul and Timothy, Paul and Silas, Paul and Barnabas. And so I'm asking you, if you desire to learn how to give Bible studies, speak with any one of the elders, speak with any one of our leaders, and if you just want to go and accompany us, just to be with us there. Same thing with visits. Um... We're talking about compassion, um, and God is calling us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. How many of you want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus? Amen? Jesus ministered. He, was not a, he said he was about whose business? So the question is, whose business are you about? Whose business are you about? Um, can I get my screen up? And we want to thank our sound department. Believe it or not, there are lots of things that can go wrong and lots of challenges. Um, and so I'm using my computer, um, my computer, so that you have to switch it. And so we want to be very, very prayerful for this. And, and I just want someone just, just to hold this. Could, could you hold this for me? Um, come on up, come on up. What do you notice on there? What, what's written on there? Baggage claim. Baggage claim. A friend of mine, he was traveling this past week. And he said he had to go to baggage claim. And he said he could not believe how many unclaimed baggages were there in the baggage claim area. There's a special side and it says unclaimed baggage. Do you know where all the unclaimed baggage goes? To a place in Alabama. You know what they do with it? They auction off your laptop, whatever is in there. If you don't claim it at a specific time. And I was thinking about unclaimed baggage. So let's just see. What's, what's in the spiritual unclaimed baggage section? You want to know? What's in there? I know they have stuff packed in here. Oh, forgiveness. So in the unclaimed baggage section, there's forgiveness, and, and there's a passage of Scripture that says, 
If you forgive our sins, what? He is faithful and just to forgive us of, if we confess our sins, rather, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In this one, it says financial blessing. Wow. Did you know the Bible says, David says, I have been young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. But if you haven't claimed it, or how about Philippians 4.19? Paul says, my God shall supply all your needs, your rent, your this, your all your needs according to whose riches? And so in the unclaimed section, I also find something else, another promise in the unclaimed section, and it says, a cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. So you may be thinking, man, how about my health? Third John 2, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so there are lots of unclaimed baggages, but you get that through prayer, by the way. That's the password, prayer. That's, that's the only way you could get that baggage. It's through prayer. I know there's got to be more stuff in the bags. Man, no, can't get in there. Huh? Well, maybe in this big one, huh? got to be another one. Oh, Doug, Ray in there in the back. Unclaimed section, unclaimed baggage. The Holy Spirit. So here's what the Holy Spirit, if you don't claim the Holy Spirit, you will be led into apostasy. You will be led into error because you know what the Holy Spirit does? It says it leads you into all truth. You know what the Holy Spirit also does? It convicts of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You know what the Holy Spirit does? If you don't claim this and you don't go and get it, it says it will tell you of things to come. You know what the Holy Spirit also does? It empowers you to witness. Maybe the reason why you are not sharing your faith day in, day out is because the baggage with the Holy Spirit is unclaimed baggage. Because the Bible says in the book of John chapter 15, the Holy Spirit testifies or witness of Christ. Jesus in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says, but you will receive what? After what happens? So the disciples had to go to the baggage claim section and they, they pulled, that's mine. You notice on this one it's got... These little tags, you know, when you go to the baggage claim section, a lot of stuff look alike. And so you put little markers. You have to claim it yourself. Very important. Thank you very much, sir. We'll leave this in the baggage claim area. What's our theme for the year? Anyone know? Have you been impacting your world? The Bible year. How many of you are continuing? I'm just making these very important things, and you probably think, well, this is not important. It is. You will never get on a flight without them giving you a safety briefing. Never. They must, by federal FAA regulations, tell you where the exits are. If the pressure in this cabin is decreased or whatever, they will have the oxygen mask will come down. You grab one, put it over your face, and put it on the person next to you if they need your help. These are the safety briefings before we leave the earth. Do you know what Bible stands for? Basic instructions before leaving earth. So this is the flight. This is, we're, we're, in, we're, we're, we're taxiing down the runway, and, and I know you're thinking, well, when are we going to get to the sermon? This is part of it. Amen. Basic instructions before leaving earth. I encourage you to do the Bible year. On Sunday morning when I wake in, these were the first thoughts in my mind. As my brain was on screensaver, and I'm trying to, like, figure out where is up and where is down, these were the thoughts that trickled down on my computer screen in my mind on screensaver. 
But very quickly, my brain booted up and I was fully alert. Here's what happened in my mind on Sunday, first day of the week. Neglecting to do daily devotions would be like President Trump desiring to leave and leave the White House without the Secret Service for that day. I'm just going to travel. No, guys, you stay there. Get some sleep. I'm going to go to Yemen and all those different places, Afghanistan. Say hi to the troops. I don't need any Secret Service and protective agents. Neglecting to do devotion will be like that. Neglecting to do devotion would be like a plane flying with one wing. And your instrument panel is no longer working. Neglecting to do devotion would be like you going into a place and the doctor says, by the way, this needle is infected with hep C, HIV, and all of that stuff. And you say, no problem. Just give me the shot anyway. You're putting yourself in danger. Neglecting to do daily devotions are critical. If you don't do it, you will have consequences. Early morning prayer, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6.30 to 7.30. Make a note of this. The Oklahoma Conference prayer line is no longer meeting on Tuesday evenings at 8, but at 6 a.m. We want to give more, more people the opportunity. Beginning this Tuesday on February the 6th. And Jesus says, my house will be called a house of prayer. It's not my directive. It's not my focus. It is God's focus. I'm just following what he says. Um, there are lots of power in prayer. And so I want to encourage you about that. Um, each week we will have a focus for you. And you will have this at the end. And I'll just give these to you all. And then someone will race this at the end. Um, to someone to pass these out, but there's a focus that we'll have, and if you walk out the door, you will see this little board, and it says prayers, and it's like uh, a clothes hanging. We'll have it on there, but you will grab one as you leave, and it is personal revival, and it has a verse, and so you pray these prayers throughout the week. I am desiring for us to be saved. Is that okay? I desire for you to be saved. I desire... You know, it's like the Bible says, I wish above all things that you would, pr be, would prosper in being health, even as your soul prosper. Intercession, we talked about it. By nature, is we're in an individual position, him or herself, between two parties, one with the need, one with the answer, and seeks to bring the two parties together. That's what we've been talking about. And so last week, we talked about the blessing list. How many of you started off using your blessing list? The blessing list, okay? Blessing list, I encourage, I challenge you to use the blessing list. If you need one, when you leave, there's a mission table. That's what we'll call it. And you could find a blessing list. Basically, you're blessing, you're praying blessing. B for their bodies. L for their livelihood, their, their jobs. E for their emotional well-being. S for spiritual. S, the other S is social. So you're asking God to bless people and you have names in your circle of influence. Here's our mission. Say it together with me. And we'll probably tweak this. So this is what it is right now. Helping people experience the love of Jesus, all right? And the theme for this month, this is our theme. Our hands, his touch. Our hands, his touch. The entire month of February, we're going to be talking about our hands, his touch. Our hands, his touch. Everyone needs compassion, is that correct? And that will be our talk this morning. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, it is a blessing to be in the house of God. Thank you for the promise of Jesus coming to this earth and dying for our sins. All through the Old Testament, it was prophesied. Thank you for the fulfillment of him dying on the cross, showing such compassion Thank you for the promise that he will come again one day. Speak to our hearts now, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I can never forget this one picture in my mind. I was a missionary in the Philippines, and as I was there, we would travel by ferry, big boats, from island to island. And it's a, it's a, it's a big ordeal. You know, you drive the jeepneys, these little jeep-like vehicles on board, and they're bananas and everything. But I remember being in the port. And this particular port, the water was very deep, and you could see all the way to the bottom. It was so amazing in the port. And I remember this little lady, so frail. She was clutching a baby in her arms. She was in this little boat. They call it a panga. It's a, it's a narrow boat. If you move too fast, you will flip out of this thing. I don't know how they balance staying in this, even while standing. And this woman, she was standing in this narrow boat. The water very deep. And we were in this vessel, a large vessel, and she was looking up at us, clutching our baby. The little boy was standing in the boat right in front of her, and she had our baby, and she was just beckoning with her hands like this and just mumbling something. And people would throw coins. And then the little boy would jump out of the boat, and he went way under, grabbed the coins. I don't know, I probably missed a few. And then he would come back up, but the lady went from side to side, side to side. I picture in life people doing the same. And I wonder how we respond to them. I want you to turn in your Bibles. And by the way, these sermon handouts, they're more of a study and, and, and reference that you could keep for future use, so I would file them away. We're going to be studying and talking about a story found in the book of Luke. But to frame this story, I will read, and you have it in your notes for the sake of time. You could just look in your notes where it says Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 and 36. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 and and 36. Father in heaven, we know the word of God is quick and powerful. We pray that you would remove all distractions from our minds. This is so critical in understanding your heart. Infuse into us, Lord, your desire, your mind, your willingness to occupy our own hearts that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's in your sermon notes, and it's right there in Matthew. So we could read it together. That will be nice. By the way, this is how the Israelites would do. They would stand and read. Can you imagine thousands reading the scroll? Let's read it together. Jesus went about all the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues. Everyone see where I'm at? Let's continue. And preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was what? Moved with compassion for them because they were harassed and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. This is the heart of God. This is how you can know if you have Jesus, his DNA in you. If you have the, the moving of the heart. You move with compassion. We don't have this naturally, so don't worry. It is only as Christ dwells in the heart through the Holy Spirit that you possess this. But we now look at the story very briefly. It's found in the book of Luke chapter 10. And in this story, Jesus talks about the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus talks about how in this parable, and I'll read it to you in your hearing, it says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, verse 25, Luke chapter 10, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what? What is written in the law? Oftentimes, we try to give an answer for everything. Jesus often asks a question after you ask him a question. He wants to have you give the insights you have. What is your reading of it? Jesus asked. 
So he answered and says, you shall do what? Love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He was quoting the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. It goes on and he says, and he said to him, Jesus said, you have answered rightly, and this is very important. The very next word is what? Do this and you will live. If you don't remember anything else, Jesus says to you and I, by fruits you shall know them. So if you say, I'm a Christian and I keep the Sabbath, but you, are, you don't have compassion, he says, by this you shall know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So basically, Jesus is saying to you and I, put your arm out, your spiritual arm, let me get a blood sample and see if you have my DNA. And then if you don't have his DNA, he says, that's okay. I am a universal donor. I will give you my DNA. It's a perfect match for you if you accept it. But if you accept it, now you will have to do likewise. So he goes on and says in verse 29, but he wanting to justify himself and said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? This is the key point also. Who is my neighbor? But he and Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. The Bible talks about the scene, and I'll have you read it on your own. I'll fill in some key points. Jericho was a very dangerous area. It would be like you going to certain parts of L.A. It would be like you going to Chicago in certain parts of Chicago where the crime is high. So it was known that it was a dangerous area. This certain man, Jesus does not give any names, but he sp simply uses certain titles of association. A certain man. He was wounded, and you could picture in his mind, he was beat up, probably had a big shiner, and he was there on the ground, left for dead. Jesus then gives a scenario about three people who came by. How many? And by the way, today when you leave, you will be in one of the camp of three. And he says the priest came by and he saw the man and he went by on the other side. So here it is. The man is there. He saw him and he says, let me walk over here. Maybe he looked at his watch. I have a Bible study to do. I got to be home in time for dinner. Oh, I got to meet with my children. Oh, I cannot be late for work. So that's number one, one, number one person. Who is a what? What is that person? A priest. Another person comes by. I can imagine he's just jolly, feeling good. And his eyes gazed over, and he's telling himself, this is a mirage. It is not true. There's a man moaning and groaning about to die, and he's bloody and everything. He looked at him, and he did what? The Bible says he passed by on the other side also. It is the same word in Greek for look and saw. So basically, they did the same thing. Maybe he looked at his watch and he says, I have my evening prayers. I must go. But then another man came by and the Bible this calls him what? What does the Bible calls him? A Samaritan. And by the way, in the ranking of society, where would the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan be on the same level, right? The Samaritan would be subservient, subhuman, dogs. Think about it. We may look at people the same way. That person belongs to that church. That person is of that sect. That person is from that culture. That person is from that country. And we may think we have arrived and we are better than they. I believe Jesus wanted to show all of these things and reveal the folly in man. So here we go. This man, the Samaritan, he comes along and he hears the cry and his brain registers help. He rushes over. He bends down. He, the Bible says what? If you're reading in that story, what does it say? He bandaged up his wounds. In verse 34, in verse 33, we can't miss this. This is a key point. I won't be long. 
Verse 33, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, they all saw him. You're seeing people as you go by every day. You see him at work. You see him at, at the grocery store. You see him in your interaction in social circles. You see him at school. You see him at the bank. You see him all over. You see him. You may even look at them and pass by the other side. But this man, it says, when he saw him, he had, what's the C word? Compassion. He had compassion. In verse 34, so he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he sent him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Are we taking care of people? Are we having compassion? The Bible says in verse 35, on the next day when he departed, he stayed with this man, by the way. We're called to stay with people as they go through their challenges. Don't say they deserve it. They put themselves in this predicament. If that were the case, then God would have written off Adam and Eve. But we see Jesus coming to this earth. We see God in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, pursuing the ones who have wronged him. Verse 35, on the next day when he departed, they took out two denaries. Took out money. Money. He took out money. Did you know God has entrusted to you money? to be used for the furthering of his work. Money. Took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper. I like this part. And said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will do what? So then Jesus says, remember, we said we all fall into three camp. Here's the final exam, right? Jesus says, so which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Who was a neighbor? And that's question number one. Who is my neighbor? Here's the answer. It's right there. The question, who is my neighbor, is clearly answered. Our neighbor is every person who needs our help. Every heart wounded by Satan is your neighbor. Everyone who is a child of God, they're your neighbor. They don't have to go to your church. They don't have to speak your language. They don't have to have the same worldview. A matter of fact, they could be living in the awful and worse sin. They are still your neighbor. That's truly what Jesus was saying. So the three... Which one of the three are you? Don't say anything out loud. It's a private investigation. Compassion is what we need. And you could go on the website. We're going to be talking more about this. We're going to be praying. This is going to be our focus all year long. All year long. Jesus, he said this, go and do what? Go and do likewise. These are not my words. It's the words of Jesus. Go and do likewise. In the book, The Desire of Ages, it says, In the story of the Good Samaritan, Christ illustrates the nature of what religion? So the other is false. We often think false religion is if they don't believe the way I do. Wrong. False religion is not doing what Jesus says. So here, Christ illustrates the nature of true religion. A matter of fact, if you look in the book chapter uh, of the book of James, it tells us what true religion and undefiled is to do what? What does it say in the book of James chapter 1? What does it say? True religion and undefiled is to do what? Widow, visit the widows and orphan. It says... True religion and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. That is true religion. He shows what it, that it consists not in systems 
creeds or rites because that is what the Israelites did. They thought because we had all these creeds and rites, we are in with the true religion. And Jesus was saying, no. Today we can make the same error. In bringing the greatest good to others, but in the performance of loving deeds rather, this is true religion. In bringing the greatest good to others in genuine goodness. Are we doing this? Compassion. Jesus says, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. The final point is this. It's right there in your sermon notes. It says the key point right there on the right side. In the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus gave a picture of himself and his mission. Man had been deceived, bruised, robbed, and ruined by Satan. So you and I represent the wounded man who was there on the side of the road. That's us. It represents us. Left to perish, but the Savior had compassion on our helpless condition. Did you think Jesus thought, well, when they get it together, I will die for them. It says, while we were yet sinners, Jesus did what? Died for the ungodly, you and I. He left his glory to come to our rescue. He found us ready to die and undertook our case. He healed our wounds. He covered us with his robe of righteousness. He opened to us a refuge of safety and made complete provision for us. At his own charges, he died to redeem us. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs compassion. At the back of the page, you will notice there are three areas that our church is focused on, three R's. Reach people for Christ, retain those who are here already, and reclaim those who have strayed away from God. That's what we're going to do. That's our mission. You can read it there. I have some resources because you're probably thinking, well, how can I get some training? It's right there. Free online courses. Empowering people with the passion and skills necessary to further the kingdom of God. It's right there. Adventist Learning Community. Dear friends, I believe Jesus is coming soon. I believe it with all my heart. I believe he is coming so soon and he's desiring for us to be saved. There are three options, four options you have in your connection card. The first one is always the same. The first one talks about what? Accepting Jesus as your what? Savior. That is the first. The second it gives you an opportunity to seek God for wisdom. Seek God in how to minister. You see on that paper, it also says, if that is your desire, I want to follow Jesus. And then it says, follow me and I will make you what? If that is your desire, that is how you learn to be a soul winner is by following Jesus. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So in essence, he was saying, I'm keeping so in line with Jesus, but you can follow me as an example and look and see if I stray off the mark. And the last one you could make a reference to if you desire to check that box, it is saying, I want to make an impact in my community, and it gives you a blank, and you could choose that one if you desire. Dear friends, it's so important. In these hours of final movement of earth's history, think about it. The Sabbath God gives us. If you're in a hurry on the Sabbath, pray and ask God to help you. If you're thinking, I got to rush here, rush there, pray. Because God is saying to you and I, the Sabbath was made for man. It was for doing good for others. It was for receiving from God so you could give back to someone else. I end again, the woman I saw there in the, in the Philippines. She was clutching her baby. And she was looking in her eyes, just staring in our eyes, speaking the language of someone in desperation. Help. I don't know her language, but I saw everything in her motion. 
people are doing the same. They may never say a word, but they're screaming, help me. As you stand for our closing song, I want us to really think about Calvary. Think about what Jesus did. Everything Jesus did was centered in this right here. What, what does that represent? Love. Everything he did was centered. God so loved the world that he gave. Are you giving as Christ has given to us? Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus coming to this earth. Thank you for his compassion. Thank you for him being outstretched on the cross. Thank you for his love for each of us. Lord, give us this love for each other, for those who are desperately in need, the outcasts, those with addictions, those who have lost their way. Give us your mind. And we thank you for the example of Jesus, as Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but took upon himself the form of a slave. And Lord, we see how Jesus became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Our desire is to follow your footsteps. Help us, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name.